Hi guys, my name is Sarah Churchill and I'm going to be presenting you guys my DEP 2100 service learning project and I'm really excited to finally bring this to life. I've been working on this research for about a month now and I'm really excited to hear what you guys think of my project. Um, so first and foremost, I did my service learning at Everglades K-3 Center, which is an LA middle. So that means they have students there from pre-K all the way until eighth grade. Now I mostly volunteered in their after school care program. So some of my responsibilities were to observe the children and how they're interacting with other people, especially when foul play is involved, as well as assisting in normal things like homework or helping them go to the restroom. So the dynamic of the classroom were a little bit different than regular day school because it is after school care. Um, things were set up a little bit different, like how the classes were divided. So we had pre-K and kindergarten together, first grade by itself, second and third together, fourth and fifth together, and all of middle school, which is sixth through eighth, were together. Now, a really cool thing that I wasn't expecting, but I'm not surprised since after school care were we had a lot of different socioeconomical groups together, as well as kids with and without disabilities who were together in the same environment. So that really kind of played an effect on some of the things that I observed. So the first thing I observed that boys between the ages of six and nine, so that's anywhere from first grade to about third and fourth grade, um, they enjoyed pretend play uh, as much as the girls did, um, if not more. They love to be a uh, pretend dad, a uh, pretend boyfriend, a uh, pretend cop. I had a child approach me and say that he was an undercover cop for the school, and I thought that was pretty cute. So I never expected that going in that boys would enjoy, especially between first and fourth grade, would enjoy pretend play. Um, I thought they would think it was too cool. So when doing my research, I wanted to see if there was any other studies that showed this kind of behavior because like me I was pretty shocked that this behavior actually existed in the school zone. Um, so I found a study of 87 Korean students, 42 of them were boys and 45 of them were girls. Now this observation included uh, same gender uh, groups, opposite gender groups, and mixed gender groups which mixed gender means either two girls and a boy or two boys and a girl. Now um, this was just focusing on ages five um, with the same socioeconomical group as well as um, the background of where they're coming from. So the fam same family dynamic. Now, some of the results that I was actually curious was um, that boys are more active in pretend play than girls are. That really astounded me because I had no idea that actually boys actually enjoy pretend play um and as they get older boys um, love to play pretend more with other boys as opposed to girls the older they get the more they want to play with other boys they do not like playing with other girls the older they get so you'll see a, a child um on the younger side maybe like two four-year-old girls playing together but when they reach age of six they actually prefer to play pretend with boys Usually that's how the term house came to be. Um, so observation number two is, this was a really big one that I saw. Um, so depending on the social economical backgrounds, so the different classes, um, it really results in how the student will drive or um, how creative they can be in the school environment. These include examples like um, I observed a lower class student, a bunch of lower class students, actually taking advantage of that after school care time and trying to um, like use the resources like me as a teacher to help them with homework. As opposed to the high class students or middle class um, that actually didn't want to do homework during the homework time and preferred to socialize because they would say that mom's going to help me with homework when I get home. Um, I also saw this in terms of uh, between the different ages as well. Now, some of the research I found was this study, which is based out of 955 elementary schools in China. 
which is socioeconomic such parent-child relationship affect a social a child's social creativity which uh, social creativity includes like your communication skills how you approach other people your peer development as well as uh, your drive to do good in school um so the results from this study show that social creativity is correlated with family socioeconomic status, family relationship, and each personality trait. That literally astounded me to, to know that it is literally the parents and the attention that they provide to the child that determines if the child will actually succeed or not in school. Um, I never thought that, um, that a lot of kids are missing out on resources uh, because their parents just believe that their child can succeed on their own and may not need the extra help like another child will. And the last thing I observe is um, parental involvement was definitely much more present in our elementary school students as opposed to our middle school students. Some of these include um, at the end of the day when the child would get picked up, we would be asked if in the elementary school student if the child needed help with homework or if they're struggling in any of the subjects. As opposed to middle school, um, they would just thank us for watching their child and be on their way. Um, I know me in middle school, I definitely had difficulties in school um, that I would hope my parent would ask because sometimes we're just afraid to ask for help. So for research, I found this uh, case study on 46 cases, um, which show their relationship outcome when included their academics as well as their parent relationship. Now, these assess the different parental involvements um, that could be from a little bit to medium to a lot, as well as how involved their teachers were with um, their learning process. So some of our results are studies using minority children um, indicated a statistically significantly weaker relationship between learning outcomes and parental involvement. The second thing I found out from this research is studies using preschool students, kindergarten, uh, children in grade one, children in grade three, and children um, from kindergarten to third grade uh, indicated a statistically significantly weaker relationship than children between the ages of third and sixth grade. So in terms of family involvement, dimensions of parental involvement demonstrated importance to the relationship between learning outcomes and parental involvement by 45% um, in size. So that means 45% of the kids had actual family involvement, which is pretty sad because there are a lot of kids that I observe that have the potential for greatness and because they may not know how to ask for assistance, um, sorry, I hit my foot. They may not be uh, happy to ask for assistance, may not succeed long term as somebody that would get asked for help from their par parental guidance or teacher. So in conclusion, my observation was pretty much close neck and neck to my research findings, which I was very surprised about because I didn't expect to observe this going into this service learning project. Um, so I observed the different genders. I observed boys and girls separate together and mix, um, as well as the different ages. So I observed anywhere from first grade, um, kindergarten, up until middle school. And the big thing is socioeconomical background. Um, I observed many different kids. Now, the majority were of lower class, but we definitely did have some middle and high class students as well. So my experience was definitely not something that I thought going in I would have. Uh, we all have our stereotypes on how children should act, especially how we grew up. Grew up, um, But that was a different generation and different time period. So these kids of this generation do act different than we do. Um, the biggest thing was boys love pretend play. I played more pretend play with boys than I did with girls, um, which I was actually very, very surprised about because I really thought it would be the opposite. Um, also, it never occurred, occurred to me how big of a role um, your socioeconomic background could play um, on your long-term education 
as well as um, many of the different factors of getting help. I apologize. Um, <laughs> my cat's trying to get out um so i never thought that our socioeconomical background could even have an effect um i thought that each kid would be given an equal opportunity in school to succeed um but we really don't know what happens to these children once they go home um whether or not they're going to partake in the same advantages uh that school teachers may give them um as well as um, their drive to do homework and to interact with other children definitely depends on their family relationship. Um, I definitely saw um, when they had stricter parents, uh, kids were less likely to involve themselves with other kids, but as opposed to kids with a little bit more lenient, um, authoritative parents would interact way more with other children. So the last thing I have are my references and I'm really excited that I got to share this experience with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you agree with my findings or if you have different ones. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye guys.